Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over 10 packages in Atom that I use every day and that I think are super useful. So first of all, to install a package in Atom, you want to head over to Preferences and open Install. From here, you can search and install packages and see the packages settings. You can also search for packages in the web browser by going to atom.io forward slash packages and searching for them here. So with that, let's get started. So the first package I want to talk about is Emmet. I think Emmet is one of the most useful tools, packages for web developers. It allows you to expand abbreviations and you can also bind keys to different commands. Um, so once it's enabled, we can head over to our HTML file and see what we can do with Emmet. So first of all, I have an empty HTML file here and I want to get some boilerplate HTML. So to do that, I can write an exclamation mark and hit the tab key. And Emmet will give us all this boilerplate code. And I can now use Emmet to generate more HTML. So for example, if I want a div with an ID of my div, and inside this div, I want an unordered list. And inside this unordered list, I want five list items. I can say li times five. And inside each of these list items, I want an a tag with the text of link. So if I go now to the end of this abbreviation and hit the tab key, you can see that this generates this HTML for us. This is super useful and there's much more functionality inside Emmet um, and you'll be able to see all of that here. But that's just a quick overview of what you can do with Emmet. So the next package I want to talk about is called File Icons. And this just makes your text editor look a bit more pretty. So as you can see, we have these different file types and all the icons are the same at the minute, just this document icon. But if I enable this file icons package, you can see it makes things a bit prettier and also also allows us to identify our files quicker. So at first glance, we can see now this is a HTML file and this is a JavaScript file and this is a style file simply because of the icons. So I just find this file icons package super useful and makes things look a lot nicer. So the next package I want to talk about is called Platformio Atom IDE Terminal. And if I enable this, you can see that I was given these two icons in the bottom left corner. And if I head back into a file, so my JavaScript file, and I hit this plus icon, you can see it has opened a terminal inside this directory, which is super useful. Normally, I would have a terminal open in a different window um, and some IDEs like WebStorm and Visual Studio Code give you this terminal by default. Um, but as Atom is kind of bare bones and just a text editor, you don't get this by default. So this package is super nice as it gives you this functionality if it's something that you want. And we can open multiple tabs and then we can also close these tabs. So that's just something that I find super useful for my web development. The next package I want to talk about is called Minimap. And this actually makes your Atom text editor look a bit more like Sublime. So if I enable this and head over to my HTML file, you can see that we now have this Minimap on the right hand side. And this is something that you get in Sublime by default. And this can be useful if you have very long files um, that are difficult to navigate. You can kind of see the structure inside this minimap and you're even able to navigate through. So I guess if I generate some more HTML and did this a few times or even copied and pasted, you can see that this could be useful uh, for long files, even just for navigation purposes. So I just think minimap is a really nice, simple package and it's something that I use every day. So the next package I want to talk about is called Color Picker. And it does exactly what it says in the name. It basically gives you a color picker inside your text editor. So inside this style.css file, you can see that I'm using this blue color, but what if I want to make this color slightly darker? I'm not great at using hexadecimal colors. Um, so I need a tool like this color picker to select my colors. So I can open up the color picker using Command, Shift and C or you can also right click and select color picker and this will open up the picker. And from here I can make it slightly darker. And then if I click on the hex decimal number here, then it will change that color for me. 
because this is super useful. I used to spend a lot of time going back and forth to Google to try to find colors, um, but now I can do it inside my text editor. So the next package I want to talk about is called To Do, and this package shows its power in very large projects, maybe not so much in just a three file project, but inside this index.js file, you can see we have this to do that says finish this function. And we can also add another to do inside the style file. And if I save that and now go to packages and hover to do and hit toggle, you can see it's looking for to do's and it's found two to do's. It's found one in our JavaScript file and one in our style file. So you can see that this will be able to find all of our to do's throughout the whole project and it's definitely useful for large projects when you add to do's and need to look back at them later on. So the next package I want to talk about is called Atom Beautify. And this is a very useful package for cleaning up your code. As you can see, you can beautify HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, and all these other languages. Um, basically what it does is it cleans up your code. So if you've messed up your indentation um, or anything, Atom Beautify will clean that up for you. So if here we again create a UL um, with child element of li times five, uh, but we put all these LIs on the same line and we mess up our indentation and all this just looks very messy. And you could go back and just fix this manually or you could use the Atom Beautify package. So if we save this and go to Atom Beautify and tell it to beautify, then you can see it will clean all this up for us. So it's put the tags onto their own lines and also fix the indentation. So this is useful if you've done some development in a rush and your code looks a bit messy, uh, Atom Beautify will clean this up for you. So the next package is kind of an interesting one. It's called Ask Stack. And while I'm developing, sometimes I have a question and I will open a browser or look at Stack Overflow to try to find the answer. So why can't we just do this from inside our text editor? We should be able to do everything from here so we don't have to leave or possibly get distracted with something else. So ask stack is super useful for this. So in my JavaScript file, say if I have a question, I need to sort an array of objects. How would we, how would we do that? Um, so to look up solutions, we could look up on Google Stack Overflow to try to find an answer, or we could do this from inside our text editor. So there's a shortcut for this, uh, Control, Alt, and A. And this will bring up this pop-up. And as you can see, I've already searched for how to sort an array. Uh, I'll just add of objects. And then we need to add our language. So I'll just say JavaScript. And I can hit Ask. And this will give us some answers. So first of all, these are the questions. Uh, so this one seems suitable. Sort array of objects by string property value. This is what we want to know. So we're going to click on this. Uh, we're going to click on show more. And as you can see, this is the question. And it makes it really nice because it formats this and gives us code blocks. So we can see the question, um, but we want to know the answers. And as you can see, again, it gives us this really nice view of an answer. Uh, so I just find this super useful. And maybe if we need to know something more, we might go to the browser. Uh, but for quick questions, this is, is really nice. And it will search Stack Overflow. So the next package is called git plus. And as you can see, it describes what it does. It allows us to do things with git without using the terminal. So if we go to our index.html file and we've made some changes and we want to commit this to git. So because we have the terminal plugin, we could open this and do git status and add our files here. Um, but with this git plus plugin, if you're not as familiar or you don't like using the terminal as much, then you can use this. It just gives you a user interface. Um, so you can see we have these unstaged changes and it actually shows us the changes, which is really useful. Um, and we can decide to stage all of these, which is the same as saying git add. And then from here, we can add a commit. And we can commit this to master. Um, so this just gives us a user interface for git if you don't like using the command line interface.
So the last package again is related to Git. It's called Git Blame. And it's enabled already. So I can go to my HTML file. And if I want to open Git Blame, I'm going to go to Packages, Git Blame, and toggle it. And you can see it's opened this um, column, which is quite annoying, so I wouldn't always have it open. But if there's like a block or a line of code that you're quite interested in, when was this added, who added it, and um, what was the commit message, then Git Blame is really useful for this. You could go to github.com and look at the history of a file, um, but I find this just quite cumbersome to do, and it's really nice to be able to do this inside your text editor. So as you can see, if I'm wondering who added this on under the list, um, I can see that it was Chris Foster on this date, and even the commit message, new changes. So this is just a useful package if you work in a large team and use Git and want to see the history of files and see when or why something was added. So this video has been 10 useful packages that I use in Atom. If there's any packages that I didn't mention that you use and you think are useful, please add them in the comments, I'd love to hear. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.